how much water storage is necessary for the city of London and how do you determine that? Uh, in the state of Utah, the state has uh, specific rules that are tied to division of uh, uh, drinking water uh, regarding water storage. And so in our community, uh, it is determined that we have a need of about uh, 32 million gallons of water for storage today. And that's, uh, that's determined based on a variety of things such as uh, peak water day, peak water uh, demand during the summertime. It's usually in the month of July or August. Um, and also what our emergency water storage is. So there, there are a variety of uh, inputs that feed into determining how much is actually required. Uh, but through studies done by Bowen Collins and Associates, and also through independent confirmation through the Division of Drinking Water, it's been determined that we are about uh, 10 million gallons uh, uh, short or in deficit right now today. Okay, thank you. Kind of a follow-up question to that. How much storage is provided today and why is a 10 million gallon water storage reservoir necessary? So Orem has around 21 million gallons of storage available um, in a, a, a few different tanks located in the Northeast part, uh, part of the city. Um, we share one of the uh, tanks with Central Utah Water Conservancy District. It is a 20 million gallon tank. We have access to some of their storage, but we also have our orange own storage facilities, uh, an additional 3 million and 5 million a gallon storage tank and two 2 million gallon tanks and two other tanks that are less than 500,000 gallons. So uh, in total, we have around 21 to 22 million gallons of storage available. Why is Orem building a buried water tank in the middle of Orem? Uh, as, as stated previously, we have all of our storage located in the Northeast po uh, portion of the community. Um, albeit it's uh, all next to the water uh, treatment facility that is owned and operated by the Central Utah Water Conservancy District. There is, uh, in addition, there is a, a concern with a fault, a fault line in that general location. And we're looking at diversifying our storage uh, to, uh, to be able to ensure that we have water uh, in the event of an emergency, such as an earthquake. Um, this will uh, help us to diversify our, our storage portfolio. All right, Neil, let's go over to you now. What exactly will this tank do? Uh, what does a storage tank do and what does this storage tank do? I'd, I'd like to kind of just use an example of a reservoir, Deer Creek Reservoir, for example, up the canyon that provides storage because water comes down the mountain early on and there's more water that comes down than we can use at a given time. And then we use it later when the demand for water is greater. Well, that concept on an annual basis for Deer Creek Reservoir happens on a daily basis in our water system. Uh, our water system has a greater demand at certain times during the day. And so water tanks fill up when there's less demand and then they go back down when there's a greater demand. And so as Chris mentioned earlier, we have the storage up in the Northeast part of town. We're going to, now install a storage tank in the middle part of town and those same concepts will apply to this tank that apply uh, up on the hill. And is that a safe way to store water? Yeah, the, the water that is going to be placed in the tank will be similar to our other tanks. Uh, treated if it comes from the Provo River, uh, chlorinated to a small level if it comes from our springs and from our wells. So it will be clean, ready to drink, drinking water when it is stored in the tank. And we will uh, consistently monitor as we do all the other tanks, the water quality that is delivered out of those tanks uh, 
uh, to our residents. And I think you may have touched on this a little bit, but where will the water come from to fill the water tank? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's just start with all of the water in Orem. We have water that comes out of Deer Creek and Jordan L Reservoir through the Provo River that gets treated at the treatment facility up above the cemetery at the Central Utah Water Conservancy District's treatment plant. That enters the Orem system. We also have two mountain springs that originate in the northeast part of Orem and in the mountains east that feeds into our system. And we currently have nine deep wells from which we draw water. And all that water is put into our water system. This tank specifically will be fed from a pipe that comes from those sources. And you'll notice in the project plan, there's also a well located in this area. We will take water from our current distribution system and water from the new well to fill the tank. And that will be the source for this water. And then to build on that, how does the water in the tank get into the drinking system? Good question. Uh, so up on the hillside, the water is able to come out of the bottom of the tank and feed into the Warm City system. Where this tank will be buried uh, in the ground and it doesn't have a high mountain on which to sit, we'll install a, a pressure booster station where we can draw water out of the bottom and pressurize it from the get-go and put that into the distribution system at the same pressure we are delivering. And as the name implies, it will boost that supply and boost that pressure into the system for delivery to uh, the residents in that area. Uh, will that water be treated? Uh, as mentioned before, the, the water that is delivered to the tank will already be of the highest quality drinking water standards. When it leaves the tank, we'll also monitor that and it will also be at the highest quality of, of drinking water standards. It will not be treated on site. Some, some have asked that if there will be a treatment facility located here, the answer to that is no, it will come into the tank treated then it will leave the tank treated and uh, we'll keep, keep everything uh, to the highest sanitary standards that, that everyone has known and enjoyed in Orem throughout um, all its water history. That's great. Uh, what's the anticipated lifespan of this tank? Concrete structures in general will last a uh, hundred years. We'll provide some um, routine updates to it and, and inspections, but uh, we would anticipate a hundred year life out of this tank. Uh, describe that maintenance that you were talking about uh, of a water tank. As you're aware, the, the city has maintenance crews that uh, work behind the scenes uh, every day of the year, in fact, to make sure that the residents have, have clean and safe and reliable water supply. Part of those duties that they do are to inspect and, and routinely view uh, each facility, and this will be no different. They will take daily visual inspections, uh, and then on an annual basis or thereabouts, we will drain the tank down and, and clean it uh, and sanitize it and inspect it. Uh, interestingly, uh, some newer technologies have arisen and, and some brave souls put on scuba gear and they actually go down and, and do some inspections using um, more advanced methods. And we anticipate that we'll implement those. Now, switching over to you, Chris, and I think this is the big question, especially on the, the minds of the neighbors. Why community park 
as the preferred location. Can you describe that process, how, how that decision came to be? Yes, I can do that. Thanks, Pete. Well, uh, in, a, in a presentation that was given to the City Council on July 12th, uh, 2021, there was a link to that on this website that goes uh, into great detail as to how we have arrived at that. That was a presentation that we refreshed from a year prior uh, where we have recommended that this is the preferred location, Orem Community Park. And we've arrived at that over a, a, a process um, of engineering review and analyses that have taken, uh, taken place over the last five to six years. In 2014, we've, we hired an engineering firm, Bowen Collins and Associates, to perform a, a water master plan as well as a sewer master plan and a stormwater master plan. In that analysis, uh, it was determined that the central portion of our city or the, or the central zone of all of our pressure zones um, has, uh, is anticipated to have failure in the form of low, uh, lower than uh, desirable standards for, for pressure, as well as high velocities in that central zone. Um, we have also, over the course of the last few years, uh, been providing drinking water to the town of Vineyard. Uh, and that was a part of the decision to locate a joint facility in this general location. Uh, the decision to do that has, uh, has come and gone. And the town of Vineyard, now the city of Vineyard, has determined that it will be building its own water tank in its own community within its own city limits. And it will be provided 100% by the Central Utah Water Conservancy District's Central Water Project. Um, so over the course of the last five to six years, there have been a lot of variables, a lot of things have changed uh, to the point where we have even analyzed a location of a water, water storage facility up by Orem Community Hospital and uh, Orem's Geneva Park off of 400 North and 600 West. Um, the process has evolved over time. The analyses have uh, shifted and adjusted as needed. And the focus has shifted to, uh, to the south uh, in the vicinity of between Center, and Center Street and 400 South and 8th West and 4th West as an ideal uh, one block or four block location, four by four block location. We identified uh, several open spaces such as uh, four orchards, one of which has since been developed. Um, and, and, uh, and in that course of that time, we've also met with uh, orchard owners um, in the vicinity of four south and fourth west and four south and 750 west. Um, we met with those owners a couple of years ago, and uh, we ruled out the option or possibility of, of, pers uh, of purchasing those properties. Um, we also have investigated properties, uh, well, Alpine School District, locations on Alpine School District's properties in conjunction with Mountain View High School and Orem Elementary School. We've had lengthy discussions with the school district and the school board regarding the two softball fields, for example, at 600 West and 400 South. Um, we've also considered and reviewed with them the potential of locating the tank at uh, their practice facility, which is uh, just off uh, to the west of the high school, between the high school and 8th West. And we even threw out the idea of building it underneath their football and soccer field that is currently uh, now an artificial turf field. Um, and, and it has all come down to the fact that we need it at this general location. Uh, but as engineers in the city, we also look out for the taxpayers of the city of Orem. Our motto in the past has been, we'll bring the, we'll give the city of, or the citizens of Orem their money's worth and then some. And uh, I think we've taken that to heart. Uh, Orem has had the privilege of, of uh, benefiting from that philosophy and that motto over the years. I believe that has served the citizens and its uh, taxpayers well over that, uh, the course of many years. And so not only were we looking at it, uh, the key location for it to be hydraulically located based on the hydraulic modeling, but we were looking at an ideal location uh, with respect to the taxpayer dollars. 
purchasing land off site off off of the Orem Community Park would mean uh, potentially a few million dollars of extra expenses or costs. And so that has not been our recommendation to date. Thank you, Chris. Let's uh, move over and talk construction with uh, city engineer, Sam Kelly. How long will it take to construct the water tank, the well, and the booster station? Uh, what we're looking at right now is we're probably looking at around the 24-month mark. Um, not you know, entirely sure on what weather's going to provide. Um, access to materials and things like that, but we're, we're anticipating a construction time of, uh, of about 24, maybe 30 months from start to completion. Um, with obviously the booster and its, um, station and, and, and the well and that structure being completed um, likely before the tank. And then what, once we have the tank, then it'll, it'll take some time to do the uh, surface restoration and then install all the other um, items as far as, you know, your turf, playground, pavilion, thing, things like that. Uh, a big question is how will uh, the neighbors and especially the children be kept safe during construction? What's kind of the plan for that? So once once we get this project and, and we get the, the location solidified um, and we get a contractor on board, we will be setting up some public meetings. It might be one, it might be two, just to go over what are those concerns, what are the routes. Um, with with the contractor on on board, we'll be able to look at staging and constructability of that tank, and then what they can and, and, and can't do. Um, you know, as as these gentlemen said, it's a very large excavation. Um, we're looking at hauling off a lot of material. Um, and with that, you're going to have a lot of bigger trucks, a, a lot of bigger tractors. So thinking that I know if, if the tank were to go in in community park and those children cross that, that area, that, that likely won't be an, an option. Now, can we provide another route that's safe for them? Sure. Um, but it might be a little bit further south or it might be a little bit further north. But obviously, safety is very important to us, so we will make sure that there is a safe route. Will it be as convenient as, as the one they currently have? Likely not, but we will make sure that whatever route they are designated to use, that it's gonna be safe. Excellent. Uh, what can be done about the construction noise, the dust, and some of the disruption that would come with a big project like this? So a lot of the dust and noise should be handled with their storm, stormwater pollution prevention plan. And I know that sounds like why, why would it, it be handled there? But, but dust and, 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 and things like that are, are, are typically addressed in that plan. Um, dust is, is going to be something that is going to be an, an ongoing issue. To say that this area won't be dusty would, would, be a, would, would not be a true statement because there is going to be some dust. But we will work with the con contractor to do what we can to, to mitigate that. Um, same with noise. Um, there is going to be, there are, there is an, uh, a, a noise ordinance for the city, um, and they will be working within those parameters, understanding that when it comes time to pour that concrete, that 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 pour might start at two two o'clock in the morning, and might go till noon, it, and and that kind of de depends on weather too. If 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 the weather is warm outside, they want to make sure that they get that poured uh, when it's during. For, for cooler temperatures so it doesn't set up as fast. If it happens to be in the winter, they might be able to start a, you know, a little bit more during the daytime hours. Um, but we will work closely with, with the contractor to evaluate that. And, and with that being said too, it, it's gonna be noise, it's gonna be dust. There's also gonna be some light pollution because they're, they're gonna have some, uh, for that construction area, there's probably gonna be some light plants set up so they can do work. Um, we will wanna get in and, 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 and get this project completed in, 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 in the soonest amount of time. So as we look to select a contractor, we're, we're gonna look at some of those things is, is this a contractor who's done this type of work? Do they have the, uh, the manpower to get in there and get it done and, and, and get out? I mean, we, we could be lucky and have someone that, that could get it done in 18 months. But then again, we could have a winter that's where, where we've had more, more snow you know, than, than we have this year, and, and it could take an additional six months. So I, I would just hope that it's being communicated that we're going to do what we can to get in and, and get this project done in, in the least amount of time. Excellent. Another question that we've seen a couple times is what will the traffic impacts look like for the neighborhood and the overall community? So, I mean, overall, I think likely we will be using 4 South 
to be conveying that material westbound. Um, there's been a, a couple areas I identified to be able to take um, a lot of this material that's going to be excavated for that tank, whether it's a future trail and or to, to Chris's point, uh, Vineyard's going to look at, at building their own tank so they could utilize this material to go down there and uh, surcharge the area to kind of help them with their construction. So likely there's going to be a lot of traffic going westbound. Now, depending on where the actual tank location is going to be, whether it's the park, um, the softball fields, um, the orchard on the corner, it's going to have a different impact for different neighborhoods. Um, but we would, our, I guess, what, what we anticipate doing is trying to keep a lot of that construction traffic to our collector roads. And, and, and we would want to do that because that asphalt thickness uh, will, will be able to withstand that 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 truck traffic. Now, if it happens to be in community park and there's that small little road in there off of 165, likely they will come up and we'll just kind of have a, a one-way route with, with hauling that material out as well as any other construction material that's delivered to the site. That would be how we, we would want to uh, deal with that. And then on the uh, flip side, there is any road damage that's that's excessive, which there might be some on some of these roads, then we'll come back in and it'll all be taken care of when, when this project is final. So yeah, if there's some roads that are, are getting used and abused, we'll likely come in and do a mill and overlay and, and try and get this you know area back to new. Understanding it's 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 a big project. Um, but but I think you too I, I think also to Chris's point, we we take this very personal as far as the damage to our city and, and we want to make sure that, that that we keep it in in good repair we we do a lot of work and and uh, maintenance on all of our infrastructure from the the water lines the sewer mains to our streets to our parks so to think that we just want to come in and hurry up and get out and, and get done but we also want to make sure it's done right because we we feel like we we owe it to our our, our citizens um because that's why why we're here so um so yeah, to answer that question, it's going to kind of depend on where the tank's going to be. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, final question that we have here from our list, and this is probably Chris or Neil. Uh, once construction is over, what will be the impact to the neighborhood? What can the neighbors expect once it's all said and done? Well, with respect to the park itself, it'll be restored. The tank, the tank itself will be a buried uh, water tank. It will not... Uh, it will, you should not be able to know or notice that it is a tank underneath that field if that's what it is. We would like to incorporate the, the community and obtain their opinion and, and their involvement of, of what they would like to see restored back on that site. Um, some have expressed an interest in, in restoring it back to the condition that it is in today. Um, others might want to, to do something a little different or maybe they have another opinion of what they would like to see there. Uh, depending on, on the overall size of the, of the structure, meaning the tank itself and what that displaces, um, everything will be restored. It'll be brand new. Parking lots will be restored. They will be rebuilt. Any damage to roads, like Sam mentioned, uh, will be repaired. Some things may need to be reconstructed, including even roads. Um, there, this effort is going to be quite extensive and uh, we, we are obviously needing to uh, develop a really good relationship with the neighboring community. During the construction and the process of the construction, we will have a public information or public outreach uh, firm that will be involved throughout to obtain feedback, to provide input, to provide information and so on and so forth. What I see in the end though, uh, is that this will be restored and this will be a great amenity uh, for the community at large. Um, there might be some things that we will change uh, as a result of this that will be will have been desired. Maybe it was desired uh, long ago that we can we can incorporate with this. Um, so that is part of our hope is that we restore this to a condition that is equal to or better than what you see today, and that perhaps uh, it will include some additional amenities that aren't there that are desired. Um, we, we obviously are um, 
in debt to the community and and we 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 look to them for for direction and we are sensitive to their needs and their concerns and uh, that is as a result of that we we do have a public outreach plan that uh, that is in uh, is, that is going to be um, incorporated with this process and uh, and throughout, we expect that we will be in direct contact with the neighbors and, and ensuring that they they have the greatest benefit in the end. Excellent. Thank you so much, Neil, Chris, and Sam for uh, taking the time to answer these questions for us. Uh, this video will be uh, posted on our website, orem.org slash water tank, as well as the questions that we asked here today. If you have further questions, go ahead and uh, send those in at orem.org slash water tank. There's a form there that you can fill out and we'd be happy to answer any questions or concerns that you